Hey everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. I'm just going to do a really quick video today to share with you some of my favorite supplies I use for paper crafting, junk journaling, that type of thing. And I don't, I don't have everything out. I'm trying to keep the list to something that's a little bit manageable, but um, I certainly use junk, right? <laughs> so I have in my, here in my craft room, a pile of junk mail, right? Things like that. Um, he heavy cardstock, chipboard, uh, cracker boxes, cereal boxes, things like that. I use a bunch of old books. I use things you can find around the house, right? But I got a question about, you know, like my favorite glue and the scissors I use and the other types of adhesive and card stocks and things like that. So I got a few things out to show you guys. And like I said, I tried to keep it somewhat simple for beginners, but I hope this helps. Most of the products that I purchase, I do get through Amazon. I do have an Amazon storefront. I mentioned that in pretty much all my videos that you can go there and look to see some of the supplies I use. I try to have it organized in some different categories like adhesives, papers. I even have like a Christmas section, embellishments, things like that. Um, and I know sometimes it's a little difficult to find things, but um, the link is there and that's something you can take a look at. If you're interested, you certainly don't have to, no pressure. Um, if you do end up making a purchase, Amazon gives me a few pennies, no cost to you. It's part of their affiliate program. Okay, so the question I probably, I don't know if it's glue or paper that I get the most, but this is, when I talk about my go-to everyday card stock, this is a medium weight, 90 pound, it's the Nina brand, and it is definitely a card stock. This is a couple of pages. So it will flop over on you some because it's not a super heavyweight card stock. But this is what I do most of my printing on for, even for like my journal pages and my embellishments. Um, I do use more of a copy weight paper. This is a 22 pound HP. It's bright white. Again, I find it is a good, a good price point for me as much, of, as much printing as I do. And this is again, more of a copy weight paper but it's great for journal pages and, and other things where I just need a plain paper. So I'm gonna get these out of my way. They make a lot of noise. And I didn't have any that weren't open to show you guys. So other types of papers and things that I use is I definitely use some chipboard um, that I purchase, um, brown craft paper I use a lot. And of course I love scrapbook papers too, but um, those are kind of, if, if you're going to print and use digital kits, those are kind of my go-tos. Now, a lot of times I talk about my big trimmer that's off camera. I don't usually bring this one on camera very much. This is probably my favorite uh, paper trimmer. I also have a guillotine one that I use a lot. Can't move it. It's too big and I kind of have it structured on on my other table there but um i'll have both of these linked also in the amazon storefront this is the tim holtz um it came out just a couple of years ago it will go through lots of different types of papers um, and materials so like transparencies um, some card stock uh, yeah, I like it and it's very precise. So that's something to think about, but it's a little bit pricey. You can get away with a good pair of scissors <laughs> um, and a ruler, right? Um, or a smaller paper trimmer. This is my vintage one. You can get a bunch of inexpensive things like this on eBay and um the places like that too are, are, are thrift stores, um, especially once it cater to crafting. Um, but there's, again, lo lots to choose from on Amazon, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, places like that. This is absolutely my favorite pair of scissors. And I have lots of scissors and I, and I like a lot of my scissors. This is a sewing pair of scissors and it will pick up things that are metal. So like my pins, my needles, um, if my eyelets and brads and things like that are metal, but I don't know, they're just comfortable for me. Um, I buy it in a little kit where you get a small pair, this pair, and a little pair of snips, but I don't know where those are right now. Um, 
I have several pairs of these. My name is on them because I do sometimes take them to my workshops and craft sessions. So um, a good pair of scissors. I have on my wish list for Christmas one of um, uh, a Tim Holtz pair. I don't know if I'm going to leave it on my wish list, but um, I'm going to try those out, I think. I see a lot of crafters using them. But like I said, I pretty much usually go back to these. These are Singer brand, and they're sharp, and they... they are really for fabric, but I use them for paper and fabric and ribbons and all of that. Um, definitely you want a good ruler and a, and a metal ruler is my recommendation for a lot of paper tearing and of course measuring. I also have shown you guys the ones with the jagged edges, but again, I'm trying to stay more basic today, but you can go explore all of that. Let's talk a little bit about um, glue and adhesive. So I often, often tell you guys about this glue um, because I get asked about it so much. This is my everyday go-to glue. It's a Lineco brand PVA um, wet white glue, right? And um, it stays flexible. I don't have trouble with it bubbling. I, I like it and this is my go-to. I also use an art glitter glue, which is another favorite, but I've really reduced my use of this once I found this one. More expensive, dries quicker, grabs faster, but this one, you know, grabs fast enough for me and gives me a little bit of wiggle room at times. And I put it in these little bottles, both, both types. This is my art glitter glue, and this is my... PVA glue. I wrote art on the bottom of this one, PVA on the bottom of that one. I also have a little piece of ribbon on this one. So anyway, I put some black marks just so that I can kind of remember when I, especially when I'm refilling them, but this is what I use every day. My favorite glue stick, and this is good when you're doing, you know, large surfaces, like big masterboard collages, those types of thing. This is my favorite. There's lots of glue sticks out there. This one I feel like doesn't fail, meaning down the road I don't see it peeling up or releasing like a, just like an Elmer's glue, school glue stick might do. But that would be a great choice, like if you just need to hold something down and then you're going to sew it or you're going to, you know, do some other things. So again, look at cost and, and what you're using it for. But I like that. And then I also use a lot of two-sided tape in a variety of widths. I tend to go with a... I guess an off brand just because it's a little less expensive but um, this one of course is a great brand um, I think they're both linked for you in my Amazon storefront this is great again when we're covering journals I even use it you know to lay down ribbon and trim and things like that um, and I would be remiss if I also didn't mention a glue that's really good for fabric and ribbon and this is in a Sugar Bell uh, applicator bottle, um, which is great for glue. But this is um, my Fabrifix glue. And there's several different brands that kind of do the same thing. But it's almost like a, to me, it reminds me of like not, like hot glue that's not hot. Like a silicone kind of, it, it does dry clear um, glue thick it'll hold your fabric and your ribbons and things down so I use a variety of adhesives this is one of my favorite tools um, it's a stapler but it's the mini staplers and it, again it's a Tim, Tim Holtz brand um, but some kind of stapler mini stapler something like that because that's a really quick and easy way to attach some things when you're junk journaling oh wait back over Y'all see me use this a lot too. I love these glue dots. Um, it's good for little bows, things like that quick. You don't have to wait for it to dry. And they're super duper sticky. So I like those. And I also have some that are repositional. Let's see. This is my favorite pen for junk journaling. <laughs> it's a brown ink. I don't know what color. It's a Pilot Coffee Brown um, Pilot Juice. Uh, that's why I write most of my quotes and things in. You may want some kind of bone folder. I have a variety of different ones, but this is probably my favorite. These are a little bit longer. I don't know. Something to crease and fold. Um, I have two like this too. You can get multi-packs. There's different things like that. 
let's see. Um, I've shared with you kind of my twine, my favorites. Um, this is the really skinny one. This one's kind of a standard width. I use that a lot. Different ribbons, you know, get what you like, guys. Like, fi find what you like and have fun with that part of it. Um, now, I do use um, these large brads, and these are one of my favorite. These aren't brads. I apologize. Eyelets. These are my are my favorite. Um, they're a We Are Memory Keepers brand. They come in different colors and even some like variety packs and things. So I use this size a lot and I set them with my Crapodile, um, whether it's a handheld one or y'all see me pull out my Big Bite a lot. The difference is one, my regular one isn't working, and I just found out, one of you guys told me I can maybe replace some of the parts, so I'm gonna look into that, I haven't done that yet, because it's not setting the eyelets right, but it does have the two different size of hole punches and where you can move how deep, um, you know, the, the punch goes in, okay? Um, so I use this a lot as a hole punch. And then the big bite, what's nice is you can go a lot deeper into a project. It also has a guide. If you've got a lot of hole punching to do, you can, if you know you want it to be at, I don't know what that says, like at three inches, then if you set it, you know you're going to be at three inches to punch the hole. Both sizes are here. You probably can't see any of this. But there's lots of videos on how to use these and the difference between the two. I like having this where I can go really deep on a piece of paper and punch a hole. And then this one is setting my different size eyelets that I like um, well. This is a little tiny eyelet, right? Um, and I have different ones. Again, get what you like. A lot of people talk about if they don't get the name brand eyelets, um, that they have trouble. I, I've only found these in the We Are Memory Keepers brand, but I just kind of buy whatever eyelets I like and haven't had too much trouble. Like I said, I have a little bit of difficulty, well, a lot of difficulty setting them with this. So I either go to my Big Bite or I use, um, which I don't even know if you can get these anymore unless you go like on eBay, but I use my old, old silent setter. Um, and I also have the one where you hit the hammer. So, um, you know, I let's, I play with it. There's lots of videos on how to set them correctly. And if you're having trouble, you know, what are some different options? But I just get the ones that I like um, and I use different brads. And I have brads of all different sizes. Um, some of them come in these little containers, little bags, you know, little organizers. I've collected a lot of these embellishments through decades of crafting. Like, I can't even remember when I got these. I'm sure it was in my scrapbooking stage. They've, they're brads with hearts on them, if you can see them. These, like, why do I have skulls in here? I have no idea where these came from. I'm nearly not a skull kind of person, but they've been in there forever and I haven't taken them out. I like the ones that have the little gems and things like that on them. But again, we're getting into like things that are not necessities, but certainly like a plain brad or a little bitty brad or something like that might add just that little bit of touch. They're not super duper expensive and you can start to build up your collection if you, you like things like this. This is another, this is the only other piece of hardware I got out to show you guys. These are those bulb pins. I use these a lot. You can make dangles, attach them to ribbons. You can make dangles with beads with um, different, again, fibers, ribbons, threads. I do a lot of times, like I'll just get like a little tag or something and you know do a little cluster of those and hang them with these um, this is what I'm hanging most of my big tassels on my little golden book journals here for my Christmas journals I'm making so you know lots of lots lots of things to do with that um let me see what else I wanted to tell you guys about um 
I do use this ribbon punch a lot, but again, it's not necessary. You really can use a circle one. Um, it gives you a little bit different appearance, but you know, if you're going for more basic supplies. I guess the one other thing I'll talk about is I do like some of these paint pens, and I would put this in a basic supply too, because like a white one you can do a lot with. Um, but again, I'm gonna stop there. I mean, that that's, that's a lot if you're just starting out, but I hope you got some ideas for glue, for paper, for scissors, you know, paper cutter, that kind of thing. Oh, I'm sorry, it's on my list, punches. And if you're only gonna have like one punch, I would say pick a circle one, that's just my opinion. But I have circle punches in all different sizes. Some are ancient. This one probably needs to be replaced. It's my one inch punch and it's getting stuck a lot, but it's probably 30 years old, if I'm being honest. Um, Again, I have all different sizes of circle punches and I keep them at arm's length because I use them the most. But there's stars and hearts and tags and squares and every kind of punch you can imagine. Um, something to think about. And I just found my big ruler, so that's a bonus. Look, this is a very old ruler too, look at that. <laughs> I have had this for many a moon, um, but it works well. Looks like there's a staple wanting to come out, but it works well. So, again, I've been looking for this. So, I hope that gave you some ideas. And I keep seeing things I forgot to mention, like my favorite Distress Ink. Um, I don't think I could craft without my Distress Ink or this type of crafting. So, we'll end with that. My favorite is the Walnut Stain and with the little applicators. So, all right, we're gonna stop there. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe for more crafting videos. You'll get notified when I have new content up. Um, leave me a comment, give the video a thumbs up. All of those things help us creators that are here on YouTube. So thank you, and thanks for watching. Have a great day.